and welcome to Journeys and Journals. I'm Bernie Martin Beck, and I get to talk to the most interesting people here in Southern Oregon, Northern California. You may wonder, where do I find my guests? Well, this one starts with the story of Switzerland. Switzerland, my friend Vivian Haney came to Grants Pass. She had two reasons. She wanted to visit her mentor, Tom Patterson, and in the process, visit us. Well, I got to meet Tom, and I want all of you to meet him. Welcome to Better Life Television. Thank you for having me here. This is not your first time, right? No, it's the, it's the second time. And some of the people in your neighborhood that saw the first show said, Tom, why didn't you talk more about you? So that's what we're here to talk about and, and the work that you've done. I, I found in your things some international. Um, Japan, what were you doing in Japan? Working, mostly. And uh, went back to uh, visit with my wife. But uh, I made several trips uh, to do planning projects for different companies. Now. You, you've been around the world and around the world? Yes. How many countries have you taught in? About a hundred. Uh, why don't you just tell us, like, who you are, when you were born, where, and... Well, I was born in Kearney, New Jersey, which is two miles from Newark, and it's just across from Manhattan Island, uh, 1925, March 12th, <clears throat> 83 years ago, going on 84. 83 or 84 years ago. Now, Tom told me a lovely story about going to a parade. And I just think all you youngsters would want to hear this story. Well, uh, it was uh, 1933, I was eight years old, and uh, we had moved to a little town in northern New Hampshire, a little town called Lancaster, lovely little town and uh, just 3,000 people at that time. And Memorial Day, there was a Memorial Day parade, and... Uh, big celebration in Big town. celebration. My dad uh, held me up so I could see it. He said, I want you to remember this, son. And there were three Civil War of the North uh, veterans marching at the head of the parade. Ooh. Oh, so this So I remembered is... it. And, yeah. and, oh, if only we had video cameras back then. Yeah. Here were three... Civil War veterans from the uh, North, Army did, of the North. Did your family go back into the United States history that far? Civil War? No. Uh, my father uh, was born here in Elizabeth, New Jersey, but his father and mother came over directly from Scotland. Now, my uh, uh, mother's parents did uh, go back that far. Yeah, because uh, our family goes back to uh, Civil War, and uh, they were in the North and just kind of drafted, along with all the other neighborhood guys, Leave mom and the kids behind, and off they went, marched. You've got a storybook here. I love, love, love. Whether we start at the first and work ahead, let's do that, okay? Whatever you want. Who is Virginia Patterson? Well, I fell in love with Virginia when I was 15, and uh, it was the only girl I ever had. At 17, we were engaged. I was married at 19. Just happened to have a picture of that, don't I? Yeah, you do. Now, this gorgeous book was Tom's gift to the family yeah. who remained afterwards. Yeah, How many copies of this book have I you? I made about 100 copies of this book. Took about two years to do. See, I think there's a book in everyone, and I think that uh, every parent could write a book or do a book to uh, leave to the children. 
and the nieces and nephews, grandchildren. Well, there's a, a young buck here with his girlfriend. Right looking, there. Looking like, uh, I mean, she's got a woolly coat on, so it must be New Hampshire, huh? Yeah, northern New Hampshire. I remember one week, it was uh, 40 below zero, and the, the warmest it got was 25 below zero. The warmest part of the day for that week was 25 below. It was cold. Oh, yes. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Yeah. Not even Mount Shasta gets cold like that. Well, the book is full of pictures and then of pictures of memories, things that you've written yourself about her. Yes. And of course, cards, Tom, you sent uh, for my wife at Thanksgiving. Beautiful cards. And you've included all this sort of thing. Yeah. And I, I left out one part. Uh, when our daughter died, 1966, her only girl, uh, that hurt so much and still does that I, uh, I didn't emphasize that period of the life. There's, so if you took a careful look, you would see there's about a 10 year period here, 1966, 76, that we don't uh, have in there. Well, that death of a child is terribly difficult. I speak from my own experience, well, own but experience. yours yours was so different. She had yeah. a disease that took her down slowly. Five months it took her life. There's and that was cancer of the spine. Cancer. She was uh, 12, just barely 12 when she died. Uh, uh, you know, the autoimmune system isn't really developed until you're almost 20, fully developed and we have cancer cells running around in her body, and it caught her. Yeah, and here's a foundation that you started in her yeah. name. Yes. Now, you've received so many honors yourself for the work you've done, and we don't want to, uh, well, here's the work you've been doing, right? That's part of it. Called life planning, living yeah. a life for whom have you done life plans? Just give me a half a dozen companies that hired you to come across the nation or around the world to do a life plan. Yeah, well, um, a leading company in the uh, uh, lift business, hydraulic lifts, uh, JLG, which means John L. Grove, one of my best clients in the world. Uh, they were 90, million dollars when we started We're around three billion today and wow, uh, success. we did life plans to several of their people uh, and that's one company uh, another is uh, Eastman Kodak another is General Motors another is out here in the west is a company called the Printronics and uh, there's just well, the, Many. the fun thing that I love about um, success stories, you know, we talk, I only know success in the car business because that's where my dad did. But um, look at that this picture. What do you see? This is a young Tom, right? This was 1976. A famous photographer who does the presidents of the United States the leading movie stars, and uh, that is the backdrop uh, that he used for President Nixon's. But the day we did this, I wasn't wearing a uh, long sleeve shirt, so he took a Nimbrock paper towel and folded it and made a French cuff. There it is, <laughs> it's a fake. <laughs> yeah. Now that is a trick I hope I'll always remember. Yeah. Um, Probably the funniest one we've had here on the TV show was that the lady came not expecting to be on with her friend, and so I invited her, and they said, uh, she had on shorts, and I said, I said, well, that might show, so I just found a picnic blanket in the car, and it worked perfectly as an imitation skirt. So now I know the cuff is... Uh, the both, paper towel. Both cuffs. Tom, uh, let's go back to uh, your first show here. 
there you are doing the chit-chat just like today. Um, Tom, uh, what moved you to Southern Oregon? Well, when my wife Jenny died, uh, two years later, I married uh, another lady named Merle Roseboro, and she had lived uh, in this town for several years. She had moved away, but she said, if I try to live in this home here in Big Bear Lake, California, I'll have to gut it because it's Jenny's, it's not mine. So I would like to move to uh, Grants Pass. I had a brother here and do still have a brother here who is going to be shortly moving into my neighborhood, which I'm delighted about because we, we've we lived on the same street for five times in our lives. And, uh, and he's recent, his name is? Don. And Don. Don has recently been widowed. Yes, four months ago. So that makes sense to have the two buds back in the neighborhood. Yeah, on the same street. Uh, I just love the back of his uh, remembrance book. It, it, her children shall rise up and call her blessed, Proverbs 31, 28. Yeah. Um, and they do. Yes, they do. They do. That, that is so such an outstanding thing. Now, Tom, let's get back to you and this travel. How many different countries have you spoken in? I think about a hundred. And I've worked in countries, about a hundred. Uh, visited some of them many times. I can't travel much now. I have to travel with somebody. I, I had a major uh, a stroke two years ago. So I have to have a caregiver now. Yeah, but not 24-7. You just have somebody come in and... Three days a week. And uh, Tom's interests are so broad and varied. I said, oh, let me take one of these. I, I really didn't know what this was all about until I met Tom. Why don't you share what you do with this? Well, I, uh, I'm an originator. I... I like to do new things, and it could be a song. I might compose a song. Uh, it might be an invention uh, of some kind. Uh, but I like to do things that other people haven't done. Evan. I'm one of those that likes to connect the dots. Oh, boy, and he has. So the, the organ is just an extension of it's you. It's an extension of who I am. My mother uh, was a pianist, and I'm the one in the family that uh, likes to uh, play music and write music, yeah. Um, when, so, well, here you are at home. There's a big lump right beside you here. That's my little doggie. Um, what, uh, this dog likes to show off and likes to just jump and play. It's just uh, a big That's puppy, isn't it? Susie Q. She's a little Boston Terrier. And the Boston Terrier was the first breed of dog developed in our country. Oh, really? It's yeah. a very American kind of dog. Yeah, it is. The well, first new breed. <laughs> and yeah. do you think I could get her to turn around when I had a camera in my hand? No. But that's Susie Q. Um, I went through his pictures really quickly. Now here's this guy at work. Do you have any idea what company you were lecturing at the time? That was the man is, was the head of Zondervan, the great uh, publishing company. And he's one of my life plan facilitators now. Okay. So he's, uh, this is Jim Buick. And there you are at the same easel doing uh, yeah. your thing. Yeah. Um, well, people are visual. You know, our processes are very visual. Uh, most people get information through the eye. And about 70% of the information is through the eye. They either uh, they see it. And so we do these the visuals. 
Tom, you just uh, put your finger on why Better Life TV has asked me some 13 years ago to do these interviews. It's maybe 500 shows ago because visual has changed our world. Yeah. TV and uh, the dream that they had to put Better Life TV on, thanks to Delmer Wagner, who had the expertise, and Bob Heisler, who had the know-how about um, moving from concept clear through. Delmer's the one that made the inventions about moisture and plywood, and he put it together right here. People said, what? A TV station in Southern Oregon, and that's about 18 years ago now. I, I'm pretty proud to be part of this. Oh, I think you should be. You have brought pictures here that show me a whole lot of uh, family. How many children do you have? And well, Denny and I had four children. Three of them are in heaven now. There's one alive. When the Debbie died at age 12, we adopted three children and raised them. Now, the, uh, they were four, six, and eight at the uh, time we adopted them. And uh, now, the oldest one is now 49 now. So, so that was 41 years ago we adopted her. Is that the family all together? This is neighbors and family. That's my wife, Jenny, right there. And this, uh, this is a, a neighbor, Jack Hartley, whose well, uh, father was the head of Union Oil Company. Now, this is a cute picture. I think that guy's pretty proud. Yeah, I am. That's my son, Bill, who was uh, four years old when I adopted him. He's now... Uh, um, 45 years old. He's a big kid. Yeah. Well, now, Tom, you are going to share a little bit about um, what your neighbor had to say after they saw the first interview that I did with you. You live in a community of? Over 55 community. And uh, one of the nicest over 55 residences I've ever seen. Highland Heights. Uh, it's off Highland. And it won an award uh, for one of the best over 55 parks in the state of Oregon. It's very really quite beautiful. And uh, you have community programs. Yes, we do. I was invited to one, a Gaither party. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. How does this come about? The Gaither party? Well, my neighbor across the street for 14 years uh, has had Gaither, what I call Gaither gatherings. And we had one the other night, and I invited you to attend because you said you were very interested in that kind of thing. But uh, you couldn't make it the other night. I told Bill Gaither uh, about it, and he wrote me a nice note uh, thanking me for telling him. Well, you know, it, it's right neighborly. I mean, a large gathering. They have lunch, dinner, dinners together, and then... You they... know, we, we have a dinner together. Then we go see the Gaither tape. Then we uh, stop and have a dessert. And then we, have a, uh, we finish the tape. And then we have a prayer time. Oh, one, neighbors. Neighbors being neighborly. That's right. Um, it's wonderful. Now, for what reason would I have found uh, kilts in uh, your photos? What is well, this about? Well, that was about? a trip to, uh, to Scotland. I think this is the changing of the guard uh, in Edinburgh. And you know, they, they didn't wear anything under these kilts. Well, that's what I've been told. <laughs> yeah. Well, my father was from Scotland. Uh, his father was from Scotland. So we're about half Scottish and half English. Uh, well, I have this 
this picture of last time you were on Better Life Television, and, and I just thought, um, we've got to talk some more since your neighbor, the Gaither, the Gaither ga uh, crowd, wanted you back on. And I learned about this, and I thought, oh, I hope he'll brag a little bit. I know you're not a proud man, and you probably not aren't. Not prideful. Not prideful, not but prideful. you are proud oh, of yes. the work you've done, because yeah. you've just received a great honor. Yes. Tell us about this. And well, I got a call out of the blue from Cambridge, who's who, which is a worldwide organization, uh, and uh, they said, we've selected you as executive of the year for professional development. This and, is... Uh, management development. And this is happening right now. Right now. Almost as we... Right now. I don't have the proclamation yet, but I will have. But they sent me a proof of the press release that's in there. What a great honor. I said, did you do your homework? And they said, yes. They checked you out on Google. <laughs> <laughs> All of these sites that you they search engines. They found what they wanted to find. Now, does that surprise you? I mean, when was the first computer you ever saw? Here you are, a techie fella, but computers hadn't been dreamed up yet, had no, they? No, they hadn't. You and, went to uh, college and... Yeah. And uh, I was at Douglas Aircraft in preliminary design, and I was very interested in electronics coming in. And I'd go around Douglas asking about electronics, and the answer would come back electrical. So I decided I wanted to be with what was coming in. But, you know, you might not be the smartest person in the world, but you're going to go farther if you go with the wave. And the wave coming in was electronics. And... Uh, so Northrop organized an electronics division, and, uh, and uh, I went with them, became their planning head. And it was a wonderful experience. Uh, it was a continuation of my planning career. So you, you're a techie. You are also mm -hmm. a, a writer, an author, a well, I feel like I'm having another career now, because I, I didn't uh, write for publication, but because we're, what we did with this business strategy was very uh, confidential, and I didn't feel we could uh, uh You couldn't write, Xerox uh, it? No, no. Put it to another? No. So some... So I, uh, but I'm having another career in writing, because I'm trying to pass it on now. We're creating a what I call a, a Patterson Process Legacy Library. Well, no, to me, this is the highest that any of us as maturing adults can do is to pass it on. Yes. Sure, we have a chance when we're young to be a, a mentor and these sort of things, but you've put your work into books, and uh, that big new volume is... They... That'll be coming out next year. Uh, the lead time is 9 to 12 months from the time you sign a contract with Simon & Schuster. Well, you sure look mighty spiffy there in your tuxedo. But this, yeah. is, this is more the Tom I know. The guy with the book stacked high around his place. Um, these, these photos we just pulled out of a, a package that it had yeah. been returned to you. Yes. My daughter-in-law borrowed them so she could make a, a CD or DVD, I guess, uh, of, the, of uh, pictures of uh, the family. And that's your son? That's my brother, Don. And this is his wife who died... And that's my brother, Don. That's me. You can tell we're both Pattersons. And his wife died four months ago. That's and so that's going to be your new neighbor. I met that guy. Yeah, you've met Don. He, a uh, realtor, is his, yeah. uh, his 40 thing. years in real estate. Well, the Patterson boys have shown the world a few things here. And I um, 
am very pleased. Tom, you've got a couple of minutes left here. Um, I want to really thank you for being willing to share who you are and how you got there, because it's been the bumpy road, hasn't it? It's, it at times, it's been very painful. Loss yeah. of your daughter, yeah, my, loss of yeah. your wife, loss yeah, of and, your and sons. Three, and three of our four children. In one way, I'm glad my wife didn't live to lose to see the death of her son, uh, Jim. You know, that's the guy in the airplane in Alaska. No, that was Tom. Tom. And uh, the airplane crashed on takeoff, float plane. Well, yeah. thank you a million for being my guest again, and <laughs> thank, thank you. you, folks, Thanks for tuning for in. Me. You can see why I'm a friend of Tom's. This gift he's given me. Uh, how? World War II stories and stories about pioneering the way of education. I'm thrilled. Thanks you very much for tuning in, and I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have today.